Okay, good morning. I am going to upgrade my brakes to this Power Stop kit. I got this kit off of Amazon. It was 190. I'm installing it on a 2008 Toyota Tundra. Now my brakes on it, if I can show you, they're pretty shot. They, uh, you can see the rotor in there. And I just changed these about a year and a half, two years ago, maybe. But we tow a boat and a pop-up and uh, all these toys. So I figured I'd upgrade it and see if it's any, if this kit is any better, um, having the slotted and drilled and vented rotors versus uh, the ones that do not have that. So, uh, actually this kit was cheaper than going to like AutoZone and getting uh, one of their Duralast Max kits. It was about 220 Anyway, I'm going to put them in. I'll probably put a parts list, um, things of that nature, and see how they do. Okay, so far, got the tire off. You can see on this side, the rotor's not that bad. Um, a lot of rust. The, that rim was actually seized onto it. But anyway, uh, it's not that bad. So far, you need a 22 for your lug nuts, a 10 for your brake line, and then a 17 for your caliper itself. And I'm getting ready to take that off. And then put the new pads and the new rotor on as long as it's not seized too bad. Okay, I uh, got the rotor off. I cleaned up the studs and part of the hub around it as best as I could. Um, but here's the brakes. Not, not that you all probably care, but as you can see on the inside, it almost looks like, well, I'm almost positive that they got too hot and they started to crack or something around it. But anyway, after you install all this, it wants you to do five aggressive decelerations from 40 to 10 miles an hour without stopping. And then five moderate decelerations from 35 to five miles an hour without stopping. And then drive slowly for five minutes to let your brakes cool down. That way it sets the pads to the rotors. So trying to find a long enough, big enough space where you actually don't have to stop is gonna be the trick. But anyway, I'll update as I go along. Okay, so I got the pads all around. Got it cleaned up. Uh, had a bunch of rust, all that good stuff. I do recommend getting one of these is to spread the uh, pistons in it. And it works just like a regular ratchet, but it expands that way you don't have to use a C clamp or whatever. I also got this hardware. And there's the part number, if you could see it on there, uh, for the Toyota Tundra. Okay, here it is, all put together. New rotor on, new brake pads, new hardware. I use this cable to hold the uh, rotor up because it has this metal line. If you guys have a Toyota, you know what I'm talking about. This. So that gets bent real easy. But anyway, I'm getting ready to slap the wheel on it and uh, go to the other side and start finishing that. And we'll go take it for a test drive. Okay, here's the uh, passenger side. I don't know if you could see it, but these brakes were shot. I can't believe I was still riding on them. But, uh,. Anyway, you can kind of see the pad in there. Here's how the hardware's set up. You just pop these two pins out. Has a retaining retainer right here. Pop that out, and then you uh, slide these out. That's what holds the brakes, the brake pads. And that's, I kind of like this setup actually. Um, but I got new hardware and new springs. 
for it. Uh, so I'm going to get this done. Okay, I got the passenger side all done. Looks pretty good. I still have to bleed it, and I probably could have cleaned my wheels off, but I'm not going to worry about it. I need new wheels anyway. Okay, here is the finished product. Um, it's been about, I don't know, two weeks since I've had them put on, so I don't notice any extra brake dust, or I don't even notice them getting rusted yet. We've had snow and rain and all types of crap from when I first put it on. The only thing I notice on this side is this little line right here starting. Um, so I don't know what that's about. But can I notice a difference? Of course I can because my old uh, brakes were shot. So, um, so far I'd say they're worth it. I mean, anytime you can prevent your rotors from overheating, especially on the front, that's where at least 70% of your stopping power comes from, especially if you tow a boat or whatever and it doesn't have brakes. Um, but, you know, I can't really, can't really say whether or not I notice a difference going from what I had to this because my brakes were shot. However, so far it seems like they're doing pretty good. This side, the rotor looks great. There's no rust on it yet. Um, but anyway, I was going to show you the video of me slowing down, you know, setting the pads and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that. Um, but just have a long stretch of highway if you do use these. It's a good idea to follow the what little instructions came with it. So I'm pretty happy so far. I'll probably change the back um, here soon when it gets a little bit nicer weather. But uh, I ripped the lug nut off the back. Not that you guys care, but when I tried to change these out a while back, the uh, stud stripped out. Luckily, I got the lug nut off, but um, I still need to, uh, you know, fix that. But anyway, when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add power stop to the rear, and uh, maybe I'll do an update video after I've had them for about six months. But um, oh, one other thing on this truck, we actually, uh, I believe it has power stop. I'm not sure. It had these rotors on it. Um, the brake pads were going bad, so I took them off and replaced them with Duramax um, or Duralast Max pads. And the, these things are doing good. And it has it on all four corners. So, uh, so far, I mean, if these are power stop rotors, I would recommend it because it outlasted the pads, which is what they should do anyway. And I didn't even have them turned. But anyway, I'll probably do another update video. I don't know if y'all would care or not, but um, might help you with yours if you're planning on um, upgrading your brakes. But anyway, thanks for watching.